Darth Desilus was a Pawn male Jedi Master, born around 3,522 BBY. At that time, the Jedi Order had once more grown strong, following its near extinction at the hands of the Sith Triumvirate, following the Jedi Civil War. And after the 40-year Cold War with the reformed Sith Empire ended in the Second Great Galactic War with the apparent murder of Emperor Tenebrae by the Jedi Knight called only the Hero of Tython, Following the Second Great Galactic War, which began in 3641 BBY, both the Sith Empire and the Galactic Republic were diminished in resolve and resources. This was the world into which Desilus was born and raised by the Jedi Order. Ambitious for battle, the Pawn Jedi Master eventually declared himself a Sith Dark Lord and was exiled from the Jedi Order. He led a series of ambushes against the Jedi with martial art trained Pawn warriors, in the process personally killing nearly 2,000 individual Jedi, and was eventually defeated only when lured into a trap above Yaga Minor and attacked by the entire Jedi Council at once. In 2000 BBY, some 400 years or thereabouts after Darth Desilus left the Jedi Order, another Jedi, the Umbaran male Master Phanius, left the Order and proclaimed himself Darth Ruin, Dark Lord of the new Sith Empire. He reunited the diminished clans of the reformed Sith Empire under 50 loyal fallen Jedi under his direct command. This new Sith Empire stood as a galactic force to be reckoned with for the next 1,000 years following this event called by modern historians the Fourth Great Schism of the Jedi Order until the seventh battle of Rusan and the detonation by Darth Khan of the Thought Bomb, exterminating all of the Sith save two. Darth Ruin was driven to madness by his quest for greater powers, and eventually became so hated by the leaders of the independent Sith tribes he brought together into his new Sith Empire, that eventually they were all unified against a sole enemy. But that enemy was no one in the Jedi Order of the time, but was none other than Darth Ruin himself. He was killed by his followers shortly after founding the new Sith Empire. By 1750 BBY, the heir presumptive to Ruin's new Sith Empire was the Sith Marauder called simply the Dark Underlord. Leading the reinvigorated clan forces of the stagnant, reformed Sith Empire, under Ruin's new Sith Imperial banner, the Dark Underlord consolidated the most elite warriors into an army called the Black Knights, stationed in a Sith temple on the planet Malrev IV. The Dark Underlord's apotheosis in the Jedi Army of the time was Jedi General Murta, whom hired a large group of Mandalorian mercenaries to distract the Black Knights while Murta himself planned to sneak into the temple and confront the Dark Underlord, Solo. Murtaugh's plan was a success, but as he struck down the Dark Underlord personally, Murta lost himself to the dark side of the Force. Following the slaying of the Dark Underlord by Jedi General Murta, the next in succession to burden the title of Dark Lord of the Sith was a mysterious man, unaffiliated directly to either the New Sith Empire nor to the Jedi Order of the Day, 
whose original name is unknown, but who adopted the Sith title, Darth Revon, following a corruption of Revon's name in an old Sith manuscript. Darth Revon single-handedly terraformed the Kularan system planet Almas using Kaluthan grass and erected an enormous domed fortress on the planet to channel dark side force and harness it to blast lightning bolts into space at passing ships. In 1250 BBY, the Jedi Knights destroyed most of this Sith fortress on Almas and slew Darcene, Revon's apprentice. Darth Revon himself, however, had used his semi-sentient force-imbued Dark Staff years prior to this Jedi raid and been transported by the Dark Staff into the midst of the Seventh Battle of Rusan, which occurred several centuries later. Darth Revon died in 1000 BBY on the battlefield of Rusan and was never buried in his crypt on Almas. His vast library, including his Sithese language autobiography and his copious notes on how to force bond soldiers to their commanding officers, creating what he called a battle lord, was only recovered from the Almas fortress some 900 years later still, during the Clone Wars. Following the disappearance, and thusly apparent abdication of Darth Revon, from the new Sith Empire, around 1250 BBY, the female Shi'ido Changeling and Dark Side Marauder, Belia Darzu established her dominance in the new Sith Empire by staging a series of strikes against the Jedi Order using nanogene technology to create an army of techno beasts, controlling them all mentally using the Sith alchemical magic of Mekudiru from her twin towered black dura steel citadel on Tython. When the Techno Beasts unleashed by Darzu during the Skittis Wars were adjudicated by her fellow clan leaders in the new Sith Empire to be too powerful to control, Darzu was poisoned by the Marcosa Order at the behest of the other Sith. Following the poisoning of Belia Darzu, a rift in the upper echelons of organizing control within the new Sith Empire occurred. Inspired by the massive Sith victory at the Battle of Mizra in 1466 BBY, and sensing the inevitable loss of control by the core worlds over the outer rim following the canceling due to underfunding, of the Rimward Holonet Broadcasting Systems in 1010 BBY. The Coruscant-born Jedi Master Skir Khan defected to the new Sith Empire and sought to reorganize its many competing factions into a more unified front under a select group of fellow fallen Jedi, which he dubbed the Brotherhood of Darkness. The most powerful Sith warlords and clan leaders, Kopech, Cordis, Kasim, Litor, and Chaos Cruel, all pledged their allegiance to the Brotherhood of Khan and the weaker ones fell beneath his military aggressions. Skir Khan's Brotherhood of Darkness, during the Dark Age of the Republic, reconquered Korriban and re-established the Sith Academy there, and battled the Jedi Lords 
army of light under Jedi Lord Hoth at sites across the galaxy. Khan carpet bombed the planets Bespin, Sulust, and Tanab, established a mid rim forward expansion staging ground on Kashyyyk and from there launched successful attacks against Trandosha and Fasira. Then came the Battle of Rusan. Rusan was a small world near Kashyyyk. The Army of Light under Lord Hoth was using as a jump-off point for attacking Sith-controlled Kashyyyk. Khan easily dispersed the Republic forces staging there with a surprise attack, in which he led the entire Sith fleet himself aboard his flagship Nightfall. The Sith repelled the Republic retaking Rusan in a second battle. In the third battle of Rusan, Jedi Lord Hoth returned with his entire army of light and attacked the Sith fleet around Rusan. In a continuation of this onslaught, the fourth battle of Rusan saw Lord Hoth's army of light land on the surface of Rusan and engage in direct combat with the Sith hordes of the Brotherhood of Darkness. Following inner strife within the upper echelons of the Brotherhood, over Khan's obsession with the conflict on Rusan, Khan unleashed the devastating force of the Thought Bomb and exterminated every living soul on the planet Rusan, including, in the process, himself, Lord Hoth, the other Brotherhood of Sith, as well as the entire Army of Light. Not even the Sith fleet in space, who had been ordered to repel the Republic in the final moments by Darth Bane, survived. Although, from a distant location, beyond the Thought Bomb's blast radius, both Darth Bane and his Sith apprentice, Zana, did survive. When Skir Khan and his few remaining loyalists in the Brotherhood of Darkness made their final stand on Rusan and triggered the Thought Bomb. It was widely believed by the Jedi and the Republic that, in addition to Lord Hoth and the Army of Light, the Thought Bomb had also permanently rid them of their enemies, the Sith. The tragic fates of each soul lost in the battles of Rusan including especially the fallen Jedi and Ersatz Sith, Githeni, compelled the Republic to make sweeping changes to its method, if not form, of government. The Jedi were, in the absence of the direct threat from the Sith, to be retasked away from military service and from government offices and titles. The Rusan reforms were attributed as the cause of the subsequent 1,000 years of peace and prosperity enjoyed by the Galactic Republic. Meanwhile, the Sith had merely gone into a deep seclusion and, from afar, were plotting how best to stage their inevitable revenge.